And today I'm going to be showing you some problems that I've been having while building my induction heater. So currently I'm building an induction heater. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it is a device that can wirelessly heat electricity through the power of electromagnetic induction. Now I'll explain this more in my project video that I'm going to be uploading probably on Tuesday. But in this video, I'd like to quickly explain some issues that I've been having while building this induction heater and how I've actually managed to fix them. Tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. First of all, before I get started, most of the components that I'm using to build this induction heater came from LCSC Electronics Components. So go check them out. Their website's in the description. Now, the most important part of an induction heater is the work coil. The work coil is what converts the changing electricity, the changing current, into a focused electromagnetic field that can heat whatever object is inside this little circle. Now this is my final coil, the one that actually works, but this was my initial coil, and I thought this coil would work at first, but it didn't. When I hooked up this coil to my induction heater, it drew like 10 amps. 11.3 volts, 14.3 amps. This high current draw caused my MOSFETs even to explode. I've already blown out two MOSFETs, and I really hope I don't blow out another one. Here we go. Three, two, one. Dang it. Three, two, one. Dang it. I probably went through eight or nine MOSFETs before finally realizing that my issue wasn't the MOSFETs, it was my inducting coil. Let me explain a little bit about how the work coil of an induction heater works. So when the current flows through this coil back and forth from the oscillator, it causes an uh, electromagnetic field to change. And that field induces eddy currents into uh, metals that are ferrous, which means magnets can stick to them. Now this metal that I made my original coil out of is ferrous. So what I'm thinking is the reason that my first induction heater was so inefficient was the fact that it had a ferrous uh, induction coil and that was causing a lot of uh, power loss because the frequency was actually being forced back into the coil to heat it up instead of heating the object put inside up. And I think that's why this copper coil is actually a lot better because since it's not ferrous and it's copper, the eddy currents don't affect it and so that way it doesn't actually get hot when it's running. I've also noticed a similar occurrence of this phenomenon in my alligator clip wires that I'm connecting to my capacitor bank for this initial prototype. So as you can see right here, this magnet sticks to these little connectors right here. Now whenever I run this uh, experiment, these wires always tend to get hot. And by that I mean the wires don't actually get hot, but the alligator clips get hot. And they get so hot in fact, that it causes the little plastic right here to melt and smoke and almost catch fire. Now what I'm thinking the issue is here is that this is a ferrous metal, and since we have that high frequency current flowing through here, it's actually causing this to be induction heated. So if you're ever making an induction heater for any reason, I would strongly caution you against using a ferrous coil for your work coil, because if you don't use a ferrous coil, you're going to get a high current draw, a lot of wasted power, and a lot of exploding MOSFETs. Also, when you're connecting your initial prototype and you use alligator clip wires, make sure to use non-ferrous alligator clip wires so they don't overheat. So I'm going to uh, put this induction heater all back together and uh, make it onto a nice little plane so that way it looks a lot nicer. And then I'll put that in my next project video. And I'll put a how-to on how to build everything behind this. Alright, now to finish up this video, let's watch a paperclip overheat. I'll turn off this light so you can see it better. We'll fire up the induction heater. As you can see, this nail is glowing red hot inside the induction heater. That means the induction heater is working just fine. And here you go. Oh! Smoke 